Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is Professional Paper Vision Chapter 1, and we're looking at coordinates once again. Now, there's a little bit of a story here. I'd actually done coordinates uh, three or four times, and I didn't like a thing I did. And I finally settled on uh, deleting the coordinates I had on YouTube and putting a Part 1, Part 2, and possibly a Part 3 discussing coordinates. Now, this is an extremely important area, so I want to make sure I hit it really good, so that's why we're going to have two or three videos on this subject. Now, we learned last time about coordinates that there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is is that you only have two coordinate systems to worry about. Isn't that great? You have a 3D coordinate system and what I've called a screen coordinate system. Sometimes this 3D coordinate system is called a world coordinate system. We'll sometimes refer to them as both world or 3D coordinates. It's easier just to say 3D coordinates. You know exactly what you're talking about. Since there's so many variations in nomenclature when it comes to 3D so that's the good. You only have two coordinate systems to worry about. The bad is that you, in order to go from one to the other, you have to what's, do, what's called unproject. And we learned all about unprojection last time. And the ugly is that you have this horrendous uh, left-handed augmented coordinate system right here that, uh, that is not used anywhere else but flash. Okay, I'm going to give you a number of resources that you actually need to review to bring you up to speed. Now, actually on my YouTube, I've actually done two tutorials. And one is on uh, getting started with classes one and two and getting started with classes two of two. So let me just say there's a whole series I put up called Flash CS4 enables you to get started and up to speed for paper vision. You want to review that entire series, specifically the ones on classes, and that'll give you everything you need to know to start we're about to start today because we're going to be working with class packages. The next thing I want to get you into is you want to go up to Adobe's website and you want to download the uh, PDF Programming Action Script 3. Now I'm going to include this with the file downloads, so you can download it from there, or you can just go right to the Adobe site and grab this. But this has got some great stuff in it. We're going to be referring to this uh, quite often throughout the uh, whole series. We're going to be taking Paper Vision 2.0 and converting it to a Flash 10 system during this video series. So you're going to be referring to these docs. Go ahead and get them now. Another book that's out there that's just, I think, is tremendous, and everyone else does too. It's written by Keith Peters. Let me bring that up real quick. You can get that on Amazon. And this is Keith Peters' book, Advanced Action Script 3 Animation. And it basically has a chapter 7 that we're going to be referring to today, which starts dealing with projecting local to global and global to local coordinate systems. So we're going to actually take a look at that right now. So let's go to the uh, actually Action Script class. And this is Keith Peters' code which he names local to global. Now I've done a little bit to it so it's not the same as what you'll see in his book from his downloads on Friends of Ed but it's, it's, it's fairly similar. Let's go ahead and run the code and talk about what we're doing. So what Keith has done is actually taken a straight line and put a little circle on the end of it and he's got a, a red circle here that's actually following the end of that sprite. So he's got a little sprite class he created and a, a red circle that's following that. So the sprite class is in 3D and what he's doing is taking the end of that sprite class and converting that into 2D and telling that red circle to track that 2D point. Pretty cool. So uh, let's go ahead and get some background here before we get into how the code actually works. So what I said last time is that you'd have to unproject to get to one coordinate system to the other. Okay. But in Flash 10, that's all native, and there are native functions in Flash 10 that lets you do this without writing one single line of code. Let's take a look at those methods right now. So as mentioned in Keith Peters' code, he uses a method called local 3D to global to basically transform a, a 3D point into a 2D point so I can actually track a circle on the graphic sprite he created. Now let's just take a look at that method. So what you want to do is go ahead and take your uh, PDF, your Programming Action Script 3, and just type local 3D to global in it and just hit return. And it'll actually take you to the method. And it, what it says here is the flash display display object class contains the Z property and new rotation and scaling properties for manipulating display objects in 3D space. So like I've said, Z is basically now native. And the display.local to 3D to global method offers a simple way to project 3D geometry onto a 2D plane. Let's go to take a look at the class, start going through that, and we're going to go back and forth between this PDF and start understanding what some of these new, some of these new concepts are with this native Z component. So let's bring back the code up here. And I immediately just want to start going through the entire class, explain to you how it's written and how it works, and run it again for you one more time. Now, real important here, we're going to start at the very top. We've got four inputs here. 
The first one, you've got to have the sprite class. You're going to have events firing. You need events. And there's two incredible methods here, and that's the point, and that's the vector 3D. Now, don't get vector 3D confused with vector. Vector is for arrays in uh, Flash 10. Vector 3D actually stores 3D points. Not only that, it has a lot of mathematics in it now incorporated directly in the Flash 10 player, which will enable you to get a rid of a lot of classes that exist in Paper Vision right now. Point uh, for geometry point, that's not, nothing new. That's just a stores a 2D point. So one is a 2D point, one is a 3D point. Basically what you'll be able to do is have an X and Y here, be your X coordinate and a y coordinate stored in this point and here you'll be, have, be able to have an x, y, and z x, a y, and a z and that's all there is to it but with both of these classes comes tons of mathematics that you can actually perform on those tons of methods that are internalized now to the flash player and that makes me super happy next you're going to create two sprites one is basically the long sprite with a circle on the end of it and then your tracker sprite which is that red circle that's going to track that uh, blue sprite that you created. Next you've got your angle that's going to basically run in your animation engine to allow you tick through the three-dimensional geometry or rotation in space and then the radius parameter I'm going to put right there. So now that we've imported our classes and we've defined our trackers uh, basic parameters. We're going to go take a look at our constructor. So we have a constructor here and I want to make something very clear here how we're doing this. It's a little bit different than what Keith Peter does and this is more like a paper vision approach. You're going to want to declare your variables and your constructor. So both my angle and my radius are declared in the constructor. And you want to initiate your graphics. Don't put the code here. This is where Keith puts it. But actually create a different package to initialize those graphics. Let me show you that right now. So you're in a constructor function, you actually initiate your graphics. We'll take a look at that method right now. And here's your initiate graphics method. So the first part actually draws your uh, circle with a little tail on the end of it. So the next sprite basically is the red circle that tracks the uh, sprite that you create. And then you want to add a listener basically to get everything cranked and pumping through the different frames per second. So let's take a look at that listener right now. So your final method is an on inner frame method. And here it is right here. And basically what you're going to do, let me bring this down so you can see it all. You're going to be rotating your sprite in various directions. That's this portion of code right here. Right? You're going to rotate your sprite in various directions. And then the next part, you're basically going to spin that all over the screen. You know, you just throw some numbers in there and you're spinning it all over the screen. Get rid of these. There you go. And in order for that to spin, you've got to put an iteration parameter in there, and that's my angle, and you're iterating that every on inner frame, which enables your uh, thing to sp your sprite to spin around. And here's the real heart of the code, and it's just one little line right here, and it's local 3D to global. And what that's going to do is take this 3D point right here and turn it into a 2D point right here, that we call P. So it takes that 3D point which is on your sprite, that's actually the tip of your sprite and turns it into P and then you can actually get P X out of P and Y out of P and that sets, sets your tracker position so basically that circle is going to be set to the tip of your uh, basically your sprite which has a long tail and a, and a circle on the end of it now let's run the code again and you'll see what I'm talking about Here's our movie once again, and we've got this like this long uh, tail here with this little blue end on it, and our red is being tracked using the local 3D to global. So basically, it's just got a little point here on the end right here that's converting to 2D coordinates, and the circle is tracking those 2D coordinates on the end of that blue sprite. So it's that simple, and it's all internalized now. So you don't have to write an unproject class and worry about things slowing down. This is all being handled within the Flash player. So next time, we're going to go the other direction, and I'll see you then.